morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be back in the house of prayer one more time. Amen. 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 We have prayed. Yeah. God has truly blessed us. We carried it through the, the week, and we brought it back uh, today. You know, we, we, so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth, and we can look at each other and have smiling faces, and, and we can say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're going to go in and get started with us. Morning service. Let's sing. Uh, we're coming to this house. We Face to face, now I know in part, but 
26, whatever day that is. <laughs> All right. Um, the next thing we have is there will be no Bible study for the last couple of weeks, 8.30, um, 30 of September 6th and September 13th. Um, there's no Bible study those weeks, and I will send that reminder for everybody. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, there's also a business meeting, uh, and that's going to be on September the 13th. There's more information to come about that. Amen? Amen. All right. So now on September the 3rd, that's the first Sunday in September, we will have a joint fellowship with Sweet Home Bible Church here at New Life. Amen? Amen. That's next first Sunday. Amen? Amen. 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 So we want to be at home when we have guests and visitors come. All right? Amen. So just some little housekeeping Amen. there. Amen. We'll have visitors first Sunday, Amen. next Amen. first Sunday. And we need to be at home so we can greet them. Amen? Amen. 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 That is really all that I have. I will update you if anything else comes up. Our weekly services, our Sunday school starts at 930. Our Wednesday night prayer meeting is Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Bible study starts thereafter. And our Sunday morning worship is at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. These have been your announcements for this week. Please go to your service accordingly. Amen. 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 Now, I want to thank our secretary for the participating announcements. Amen. Amen. Now, the, the 26th of August is the fourth Saturday of August. They always practice the day before the Sunday, fourth Sunday service. That's the correction I want to make in the announcements. Yeah. <laughs> so the Christ over everything youth ministry will reverse the fourth Saturday. We do that each month. Uh, in preparation of fourth Sunday service. You're right. Amen. Thank you, sis. Thank you, sis. So the children will rehearse on that fourth Saturday. Amen. 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 Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I don't know about y'all. God deserves a lot more than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If your hands fall off your hands, he at least deserves that. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. He has been good to us. Amen. Amen. I ask that you keep, continue to keep Evangelist Dr. Dottie Ford and Pastor Americas Ford lifted up in your prayer. Amen. As God is amending them. Amen. Amen. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Deacon is young. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hold on. Amen. Take this off. Amen. Amen. The protection. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. 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 All the time. My God is good. Amen. 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 It's good to see our sister Nita back in her journey. And I noticed on one of the pictures that she she took that she was picking peaches. So I'm hoping she has a peach at least for me because she had a barrel full of peaches. Amen. 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 And it's good to see our sister Karen back. Amen. 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 And it's just, uh, she was here last Sunday. She's just here this Sunday. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's a blessing to see you. Amen. 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 Now, I'm not going to hold you long. So, if you will, all. Oh, and also keep our brother Johnny Green lifted up in prayer as he returns sometime next week. Amen. 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 He's traveling right now, taking care of some things in Wisconsin. And uh, he should be back on the 18th, uh, according to Dr. Green. Amen. 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 So turn your Bibles as you can. And as the in prayer to receive the word of God. Turn your Bibles first to Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21. I had it. I had it. I had it somewhere. Amen. Amen. So put your finger there in Matthew 7, verse 21. And then from there, we'll go to Daniel chapter 1, verses 19 through 22. Amen. And as we prepare to receive the word, I will ask that the demonic hymn be sung. Amen.
chapter 7, verse 21 says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. James chapter 1, verses 19 through 22 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man or woman be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. I'm going to say that again. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Deceiving your own self. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades away, but the word of God will last forever. Amen. I would like to preach on the topic, let every ear hear. Let every ear hear. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Just because you're listening, don't mean just because you're hearing don't mean that you're listening. Amen. Amen. I, can, I mean, some of us have mastered how to block people out. Okay. When my children, well, I ain't going to say my, my children were good. They were good babies overall. Amen. Right. But when it comes to my grandbabies, sometimes you just got to block them out. You hear them, <laughs> right? You hear them, but you ain't listening to them. Yeah, right. Amen. And I say that to say anybody can hear. Right. But Part of hearing and part of hearing is receiving, which means you gotta listen. Amen. And once you listen, now you gotta take in what you are listening to. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Because hearing comes by what? The yeah. word of God. Amen. Amen. See, there's more to that. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Which means if I come, if I have come to faith in Jesus Christ. It means I'm taking in everything that the word is saying to me about myself. Yes. Right. You see, when I came to faith in Jesus Christ, I heard the word of God, and the word of God got in me to the point where it convicted me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. See, it convicted me that I am a sinner in need of saving. Yes. All right. yes. And see, and that me being a sinner in need of saving meant that I knew that I need Jesus Christ. Yes. Right. That's when my faith became evident because I confessed with my mouth right. Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and I, knew, and I knew that God had raised him from the dead in my mind, body, and soul. Right, and the Bible tells me that I was saved at that moment. Amen. So you have to take in what you hear. All right, which means not only hearing the word of God but you got to take in the word of God. And which leads me to ask you this. What do you come to church for? Do you come to hear the choir sing? Hear the church announcements? Catch up on the latest gossip? Who is attending church and who is not attending church? Come on, somebody. Some people keep an eye on that attending and who is not attending. And also, people keep their eye on who's coming to church and who they coming with. Uh -huh. All right. All right. All right, now. All right now. Some, of, some of you single women, Oops. some of you single men, look to see who's coming through the door who may be single. Right. And if they are single, they may show up the next Sunday with somebody else. All so right. you come to see who they showing up with. All right. And vice versa. Right. I'm just keeping it real. Right. Amen. But my real question is this. Do you come to church to receive the word of God? You see, we have people that come to church. It's because they were taught to come to church. It's a tradition with them. It's something they, that they do. But do you come to church to get better? Do you come to church to be encouraged and inspired by the word of God? 
Or do you just come to church just to be coming to church? All right now. You see, I don't know what y'all all have come here to do. Yeah. But I have come not only to lift up Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. All right now. But I have come to fellowship with the saints. Yes. But most importantly, I have come here, even though I'm preaching the word, because I'm preaching to myself as well. Yeah. I come here more importantly for the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I do not know about you. But when I'm sick and need to be healed, I want my doctor to give it to me straight and tell me what I need to do to get better. And I'm not talking about a earthly doctor. I'm talking about my spiritual doctor. I'm talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who saved me, the one who sustained me, and the one that keeps me. I want to know what his prognosis is on my diagnosis. I want to know how to get better in my walk with him. I want to know how to live better in my walk with him. I want to know how to love better with my walk in him. You see, he's the only one that can tell me what I need to be doing. Come on, somebody. And let me say, and this is exactly what the word of God does for us. It is our spiritual examination, our spiritual checkup. You see, the word is God, the word of God is not for me to look at you and point out your flaws. Right. Right. The word of God is for me to look at myself. Right. So I can see my own flaws. Yeah. Right. I get tired of people saying, Well, Pastor, you must be preaching to that person or to that person. Mm. Well, let me tell you this. It's not that I'm doing the preaching, I'm just giving God's word out. So whatever God puts on my heart to preach is for everybody, including myself. Amen. You see, the word of God is a mirror for the soul. Yes. Whether read or heard through sermons delivered by men and women of God, the word of God exposes the true person who lurks inside each and every one of us. That's why people stop coming to church. That's why people don't study the word of God. That's why people don't get into the word of God because they don't want to know about themselves. All right now. So as the word comes forth, let every ear hear James' warning to pause whenever the word is presented and allow it to penetrate our mind, body, and soul, which means allow it to penetrate our total being. Because if the word of God is in you, the world will not be in you. You see, the word of God is the vehicle by which you and I can get to know and become intimate with God. Right. If you want to know who God is, it's in the word. Right. If you want to know how to live your life as a Christian, yeah. it is in the word. Yeah. Everything you need to know is in the word of God. Yeah. But the problem is that we face today is the word of God in you. Yeah. Let every ear hear yeah. are we doers of the word of God. And I'm not asking about whether you can find your name in the Bible. I'm not asking you if you can quote scripture word for word. I'm not asking you about whether or not you can relate to the hardship of Abraham or the faith of Moses. I'm not asking you what Jesus said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. But my question today, right now, is this. My brothers and sisters are simple. Are we hearers or are we doers of the word of God? It is, the word, if, it is the word of God important to you in your daily walk. Amen. If the word of God is not important to you and you claim Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are in spiritual trouble. All right. All right now. You see, if the word of God is not important to you, you will never live the kind of life that God intends for you to live. Right. You see, yes, you may have salvation, but you have no strength. You will have salvation, but no power. You will have salvation, but no joy. You will have salvation, but no testimony. You will have salvation, but no crown. You will have salvation, but you will not have any peace. Let every ear hear what the Bible says. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A work but that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. 
And if you want to know why a child of God do not know how to act in critical situations, or if you want to know why a child of God act a fool when people come against them, right. you'll find out that the word is not in you. Yeah. You see, when the word is in you, right. you live like the word. Yes. You see, we are living in critical times today because we live in a world that don't know Jesus and don't care anything about Jesus. Right Our elected leaders are more concerned about power and line in their pockets than the people who have elected them. The world is constantly trying to change our way of thinking because right is now wrong and wrong is now right. right. They're always trying to bring about a change in our living and in our mind. Right. But changes are not made by man, not by the government, not by people yeah. or the world. Yeah. Changes are made when men and women, boys and girls, yeah. have a change of habit and a change of heart. Yeah. And the only one who can bring about that change his name is Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. His, through his word is how we are changed. Yeah. The word of God is the only bill. Yeah. The only bill right. that can effectively change our lives. Yeah. Despite what the world may tell you. Right. Despite what your spouse may tell you. Right. You can't change nobody. Right. Only God can. Yeah. And the Apostle James is stressing this principle because he has seen firsthand how Jesus can change anyone who comes to him by faith. Yes. And if you don't believe me, read it for yourself in the word of God. Okay. And you will see Peter was a changed man. Right. He changed from a cursing fisherman to a preaching pastor. Yes. Right. Matthew was a tax collector changed to a gospel writer. Yes. Paul was a heartless killer right. to a Holy Ghost built apostle. Right. And I've seen for myself Oh, I've seen for myself how he changed me from a sinner into a saint. No, I am not perfect. No, I don't always walk that straight line. But thank God I belong to Jesus. Because when I stumble, he's there to pick me up. When I fall, he's there to pick me up. When I don't, don't know which way to go, he knows he's there to show me the right way. Oh, come on, somebody. I thank God for my Lord and Savior, right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And let me ask you, has Jesus changed your life? Right. Do you know who Jesus is? You Do you know what he did on the cross for your sins? Uh -huh. Do you know that he sits right now at the right hand of the Father? Yeah. Do you know that he makes intercession, yeah. not for the world, Come on now. but for those who belong to yeah. his heart, right the yeah. called out one, the yeah. saved one, the saints? Right. Oh, come on, somebody. Right. And the truth of the matter is every time a man, woman, boy, or girl allow the word of God to get in them, there's going to be a change in their lives. Yes. The word of God will either draw you to Christ or it will drive you away from Christ. And whenever the word of God becomes real in your life, you can't stay the same. Yeah, amen. The Apostle James tells us that the word of God must become a living and breathing part of our spiritual lifestyle. And let me suggest to you, our lifestyle says a lot about who and what we are. Amen. But most importantly, our lifestyle will show who we belong to. Yes. Right. Yes. The Bible says, so a man thinketh, so is he. Mm -hmm. And if you look with me closely at this text, you can clearly see James focus most squarely on the process of the word of God. James tells us that we must guard our hearing, guard our tongue, and guard ourselves in verses 19 through 21. And now the most important factor is reveal how to accomplish this task. And let me say again, let every ear hear, be ye doers of the word of God. The word of God must be operational in our hearts and in our lives, which means reading and hearing is not enough. The word must be in us. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that God thought enough of me yes. and his children yes. that he gave to us his word. Yes. Because without the word, we would know of his saving grace. Amen. Because without the word, we would know of his tender mercy. Yes. Without the word, we would know of his sovereign will. Yes. Without the word, we would not know of his loving kindness. Yes. Without the word, we would not know of his divine power. 
Now, the first thing I want us to see is James' command is clear. In verses 21 through 22, let every ear hear, wherefore lay apart all filthiness or superfluity, which means overabundance of naughtiness, which means wickedness, and receive with meekness, which means humility, the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Be ye doers of the word. So the Apostle James writes this text in the present imperative action. In other words, these are not suggestions, these are not opinions, and these are not recommendations. These are commands that must be followed by every believer once they have heard and been told. Right. Then they must follow and obey these commands from God. In this text, James says that just in case someone wants to argue or quarrel about the word of God, he makes it perfectly clear, concise, and precise that we have to lay aside unnecessary naughtiness, unnecessary wickedness, misconduct, misbehavior, the backbiting, stabbing in the back, the disobedience, the transgressions, and accept the word of God, which is able to save your soul. James is saying that as we pull off or lay aside certain things in our life that are ungodly. And let me take you guys back to a few Sundays. Remember, we are under construction. A spiritual juggling act will take place simultaneously and a change will occur in our life. You see, the word of God will be pulling things off of you in the construction process that is contrary to God and put on you the things of God. In other words, your life should be not should not be the same today as it was last year or yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And this is and this can only occur when every year here yeah. if you be doers of the word. All right. Jesus said that you are who Jesus said that you who are claiming Christ need to be a doer of the word. Talk is cheap, y'all. Yeah, yeah. And the Greek word doer that is used here means one who is a keeper of a law, one who is a keeper of a precept, or one who is a performer, a doer. So James is also arguing or suggesting as doers that we are to be builders, construction workers. We are to be busy about the kingdom, not based on our own agenda, but based upon Jesus' agenda. Amen. And in case you don't know what Jesus' agenda is, it's in the word of God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For he said, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Jesus' agenda is to have people saved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, when we hear the word of God, we have the, we are, we have the responsibility to live by the word, to be obedient to the word, to follow the word, and be doers of the word. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. In other words, once you hear it, now you're responsible for it. Hallelujah. No more excuses. No way around it. Once you receive the word of God and understand the word of God, now you're responsible for being a doer of the word of God. You see, and being a doer is not about shouting in the church and falling out. Being a doer is not about jumping up and down in church and running down the aisles. Right. Being a doer is not about singing in the choir. Being a doer is not, even be, it's not even about preaching, teaching, and attending services. Being a doer is, is about being obedient to the word of God. In other words, if you're going to talk it, you need to walk it. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Let me put it this way. Once you receive it, right. or hear it, I should say, you need to believe it. Yep. Right. Because whatever God said, right. I believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we practice, when we, once we believe something, we practice or we do what we believe. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. If I believe in cooking collard greens a certain way, guess what? That's the way I'm going to cook my collard greens. Right. Amen. Right. Amen, somebody. <laughs> if I am a loving and kind person that mm -hmm. loves everybody and speaks to everybody, guess what? That's what I'm going to do. Amen. We do what we believe. Right. But if you don't come to where it's being preached, right, if you don't come to where it's being taught, and I'm talking about the word of God, 
you can hear. And if you can't hear, you will not believe. When the Lord, when the Lord spoke to the churches of Asia Minor in Revelation, Notice that he said, those who have ears, let them hear. Uh -huh. But the ears have to be in the position to hear the word of God. Yeah. And unless you put yourself into a position to hear, you won't be a doer. Uh -huh. James' second point is a caution, which is found in the latter part of verse 22. Let every ear hear. Amen, somebody. Right. Where it says, not only hears only. James says that after we have decided to become a doer of the word, we can't afford to fall back and be just hearers. When, what James is saying is that there is no benefit in hearing unless you do what the word says. Amen. Salvation does not come by only hearing the word of God, but by believing the word of God. Yeah. In the New Testament, it has the meaning of one just listening without practicing what one hears. And I think I can safely say that James is telling us, don't get caught up with the sounds of the music or how the choir sang that last song or how the lead singer went from that note to this note. Don't get caught up in the preacher's rhythm, pitch, or tone of the delivery or how they brought it home at the end of the sermon, Amen. or the melody, transition, or flow of the teacher's lesson. But get caught up in the word mm -hmm. and move forward from what we heard to what we do. Yeah. Today, too many believers get caught up on the entertainment on Sunday right. that they cannot remember on Monday huh. what they were taught in the word on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I once heard a person say, you might not remember what the preacher preached about, but you will remember the song that the choir sang. Amen. There's a problem with that. Amen. Because the last time I checked, Jesus is the word. Amen. And if the word is being preached, the word is the most thing, important thing we should be receiving and taking in. Did no song sing a save me? Amen. The purpose of music in the church is the glory to praise God and to prepare people for the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. music don't save you. Lyrics don't save you. The singer don't save you. Nothing dealing with music saves any of us. Right. But it prepares us to receive the word of God. Yeah. So when I hear a person say that sometimes people won't remember what the preacher preached, but they remember that the song that the choir sang, there's a problem with that. That tells me that your, eye, your ears are more fixed and your eyes are more fixed on the entertainment of the church than the word of God. Right. Because I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, the first people that hit the door when the word was coming from the, from the pastor was the musicians mm -hmm. that hit that door and, and sit there, do what they're doing outside, then they would come back, out, come back in when it was time for them to play the music. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is, y'all, if you want to know how to live your life, if you want to know how, if you want to be empowered in your walk with God, you got to know the word of God. Amen. You got to receive the word of God. You got to take the word of God and you got to run with the word of yes. God. Yes. See, some of us need to get out of our slowfulness, get off the blessed assurance and recognize the word of God. Hear the word of God, study the word of God, and obey the word of God. Yes, yes. We need to tell somebody, share the word with somebody, minister to somebody, get out of the house of prayer, and be a witness for the Lord. All right. God has no use for a closet Christian. All right. Oh, man, I'm not getting a lot of amen. I'm not getting a lot of shouting. I'm just telling you what's done says the Lord. Yes. Let every yes. ear hear what the Lord has to say, yes. not what... Ronald Brown has to say, but what the word of God has to say. Amen. You see, it's time that we go ye therefore and teach all nations. Yeah. It's yeah. time that we awake out of our sleep. Yeah. After hearing the word of God, there ought to be a fire that ignites in our heart that leads us to share the good news. Yeah. Amen. After hearing the word, it ought to make us want to live better 
sing better, walk better, talk better, and treat our fellow man better. Yeah, man. After hearing the word of God, it should lead us to actions All right. and not inactions. Mm -hmm. right. You see, for Jeremiah said, the word of God was in my heart as a burning fire, mm -hmm. shut up in my bones. Mm -hmm. right. So let me ask you, is the fire burning in you? All right. Or do you just come here because this is something you do every time? Right. Or do you come here to be equipped? Yes. Do, you be, do you come here to be edified? Right. Do you come here to receive your instructions? Right. Do you come here to get in the word of God so it can get in you? Yes. Right. Do you come here to have a better relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, James' final point is when we are hearers only of the word, and not only doers, that every year here, the latter part of verse 22, we are deceiving our own self. In other words, we are lying to ourselves. Amen. Amen. Anyone who believes that all they have to do is hear the word and not be doers mm -hmm. is deceiving themselves. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And yes, faith comes by hearing and uh -huh. hearing by the word of God, uh -huh. but your hearing must lead to faith in the word of God, yes. which will also lead to actions, being a doer mm -hmm. of the word of God. Yes. And one of the things faith produces is obedience. Mm -hmm. And obedience is just another word for doing. And if you're doing what the Word of God says, then the Word of God is in you. And why is it so important that the Word of God is in you? Because the Word says in John chapter 1, verse 14, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So why is it important that the Word be in you? Because Jesus is our Lord and Savior is the word. Yes, right. yes, yes. So when you're only hearing the word and not being a doer of the word, Jesus is not a part of you. Jesus is not operating in you. And Jesus is not alive in you. Amen. I'll talk back in. But the good news is this. When Jesus is alive and kicking in you, it is Jesus in the morning. It's Jesus in the evening, yeah, yeah, and it's Jesus yeah. in the midnight hour. Yeah. When the word is operating and alive in you, there are some benefits that the world can't give you. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. You see, the word Jesus has promised us. He will give strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. He has promised us when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will, not sweep, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. He has promised us. Though the mountains be shaken, and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed. Thank you, Lord. Let me bring this home for you, brother. Amen. Let every ear hear. When you are doers, God will take you to a new level in him. When you are a doer of the word of God, he will take you to a new level of life, a new level of service, a new level of giving, a new level of prayer, a new level of praise, a new level of worship, a new level of stewardship, a new level of commitment, a new level of holiness, and a new level of relationship. When Jesus is in you, ain't nothing too hard for you to do because he's in you. What's too hard for God? There are a lot of people who have heard about Jesus. There's a lot of people sitting right here that have heard about Jesus. But do they, but do they have a relationship with him? Being a doer of the word means having a relationship with the word, yeah. Jesus Christ. Right, yeah. See, a lot of people have read about and heard can feed 5,000 with a loaf of bread and two fishes. But do you remember the time? Do you remember the time he fed you when there was nothing in the house but two slices of bread and some ketchup packages? Come on, somebody. A lot of people have heard about him healing the blind, sick, and lame. But do you remember the time he healed you when you thought you were going to die from cancer? When you thought you were going to die from a car accident? When 
and we got you from now with a brain tumor or with a drug overdose. A lot of people want peace in their life today, but do you know him as your prince of peace? A lot of people have heard about him being the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, but you, do you know him as your God, your Savior, your Lord, and your Redeemer? Do you know him as your rock, your sister, your refuge? Do you know him? And if you know him for yourself, clap your hands. Stop your feet. Get your hands closed. Give him some praise. Because I'm so glad I know him for myself. Because when I cannot see the light, at the end of the the word tells me, and that's the word of God, tells me he is my God. When I don't know which way to go, the word tells me he is the one that leads me. When I don't understand, the word tells me he is the one who teaches me. When I stumble, the word tells me he will pick me up. I know I have come to know. Come on, my brothers and sisters. I have come to know that the word that was made flesh is more than all right. Some people say it's all together nothing. Some people say he's all right. But I tell you right now, he is my all in all. He is my everything. He's the one that sustains me. He's the one that keeps me. He's the one that put a smile on my face and gives me peace in my heart. You see, when you lean on Jesus, when you go to Jesus, when you ask him to hold you up, despite what you're going through, he's going to hold you up. Oh, I can testify that. When you walk through sickness, he'll heal your body. Whatever you may be going through, Jesus got you. He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. And all we got to do is learn to lean on him. And we don't know how to lean on him if we ain't in the word. Because the word of God gives us the ABCs and the one, two, three. If you want to know how to live your life, get in the word. If you want to learn how to forgive others, get in the word. If you want to learn how to love others, get into the word. If you want to learn how to serve others, get into the word. If you want to learn how to stay away from this or stay away from that, get in the word. It is in the word of God that helps us walk in this life. And every year here, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. I'm here to let you know that you don't have to depend on lean on man for anything. Amen. Just go to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get so wrapped up and tied up in the things of the world. But we start acting like the world. But the word of God tells us that if we're of this, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Yeah. And God also tells us, if man loves the things of the world, there's no way we can, be, we can love him. We cannot serve two masters. Amen. So we need to know the word of God on how to live our lives. Amen. See, Jesus even mentioned this, doing what he says. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, Jesus said, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who, hear, who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice it's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Yeah. You see, the rain came down, the streams rose, uh -huh. and the winds blew uh -huh. and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Yeah. So Jesus is doing what I said he did. There's power in that. Yeah. And he gives this beautiful analogy. If your life is built on Jesus, who is my rock? You may stumble, you may fall. The wind may try to blow your house down. The streams may rock. But Jesus will be there to hold you. But if your life is built on the foolishness of this world, 
the belief in the things of this world, and the worshiping of leaders in this world. Okay. Because we see Christians doing that. Yes. Then your house will sink like sand. Yes. Because now it's built on the world right. and not on the rock. Yes. Yes. We need to know Jesus yes. is our way, he's our truth, and he is our life. Yes. Yes. And we need to go to him for everything that we need. Yes. We need to learn there's no other way but Jesus. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. Like James, Jesus also told us that it isn't enough just to hear his word. Right. We have to do what he says. Yes. The foundation of a godly and blessed life is not just hearing God's word, but doing what he says. Right. And that's the choir comes. It may be someone here today who has been under conviction for a long time about something. Though his word, through God's word, God has been hammering you about something in your life. If it is the issue of salvation, you need to trust Jesus and be saved. Amen. If it is your marriage or a broken relationship that needs mending, Jesus will and can put it back together. If it is a destructive habit or a bad attitude towards life, come and let us pray for you. God knows everything you may be going through. If you want to be baptized or become a member here at New Life Missionary Baptist Church, come and we will receive you. Everything you need to do is about Jesus. Because he says, when two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in the midst. Yes, man. And I'd like to leave you with this thought. Blessing of God awaits those who are willing to be doers of His word. Yes, you see, we want the blessing, but we don't want to do it. All right, all right. So we need to we come on, quiet. We need to be obedient to His word, okay. live by His word, right, and follow His word. Yes. And as everybody said, if you have something mm. that you want to take to Him, bring it to Him. Whatever you need can be found in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So don't be shy about it. Don't let it burden you. Jesus said, I will be your burden bearer. Turn it over to him and let it go. The doors of the church are open.
struggles with my parents. More so when my father was in the room, because my mother was in the room. I know what my mother was doing, you know. And the fact that I don't know what my father meant, I know he's with God, but he was seeking his Lord and Savior. But it's a struggle. And the Bible teaches us that there's nothing wrong with mourning. Amen. There's nothing wrong with mourning. But eventually, we're going to have to move from the mourning to rejoicing. Now, Amen. Give the Lord some praise. 
Mary Baptist Church, amen. And I thank God. We continue to pray for church growth uh, because God has a role for all of us to play, amen. Amen. amen.
Ah! Uh -huh. 